Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to the Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one Filipino show in the Midwest. I'm Grady Pasqual. Welcome to our show. Today we have all the top stories from the Philippines. We also have what's happening in our own Filipino-American community of Chicago. We have interesting interviews led by our very own executive producer, Ms. Veronica Layton. We have Bridget Cotero Carino. All these are coming up and more. Afterward from our sponsors, please stay with us. Headline inflation accelerated to 6.1% in September from 5.3% in August. The Philippine Statistics Authority attributed the rise to food and transport prices increasing at a faster pace. Despite the imposition of a price ceiling, rice inflation ballooned by 17.9% or more than double the previous month's rice inflation of 8.7% and the highest in 14 years. But the PSA says rice inflation numbers are inconclusive of the effectivity of the price cap. In the first phase of our data collection, there uh, are uh, outlets that have said that they have the stocks no, here in regular and wheel milled rice, so they have a uh, mas mataas na pressure. In the second phase, there have an adjustment, there are more uh, people who have been compliant. No? PSA's second phase monitoring showed that not even half of rice varieties covered by the ceiling were compliant. Average national prices in September were also higher than the price ceiling. Rice Watch Group Bantay Bigas is convinced the price ceiling failed. Very, very hindi siya effective. Uh, mas ang uh, naging victim nga ay yung mga uh, retailers na uh, makarinig ka talaga sa mga retailers na uh, mag, hindi na lang ako magbebenta kaysa magpalugi ako. Um, talagang mangyayari yung napakataas na intention. Economist Nicolas Mapa agrees, adding that supply challenges should instead be addressed. Food inflation was the main, uh, I guess, myth that we, we weren't expecting. Uh, rice inflation at 17.9%, this just tells us that the price caps implemented uh, were not effective. But the Presidential Communications Office said the economic team is expecting a moderation in rice prices as the harvest season begins. Previous orders of rice imports are also expected to arrive. Finance Secretary Benjamin Jokno assured the public that the administration is all hands on deck when it comes to arresting high commodity prices. Meanwhile, NEDA Secretary Arsenio Balisacan said the government will continue to address long-term supply challenges and support the local agriculture sector. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is the perfect time to get cash out, while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need $25,000, $50,000, or even $100,000, now's the time. Home values are up, and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. 
Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. 901-245-4874. That's 901-245-4874. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, Beauty, mysticism, Bata Corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773 866 0811. Pagandang hapong po sa inyo lahat, and welcome to Veronica's segment of the show today. I have a very interesting, exciting, and dynamic woman um, in our community. In there, and you, you're. I think you're familiar with this lady already because she. Uh, I interviewed her before. She is uh, one of the Hall of Famers, outstanding uh, Hall of Famers in uh, in our community, and um, uh, that event was. Uh, Sponsored by the uh, Bio Times and Chicago Philippine Reports TV, and uh, we're still, um, uh, well, right, we're still idle right now. At this point after the COVID, uh, and uh, many people have been asking me about about the uh, Chicago Philippine, uh, I mean, uh, the Filipino American Hall of Fame. But we will be back. We will be back in next year, and uh, okay. Welcome back to Chicago, Miss Maria uh, Fides Balita, right? Miss Maria Fides Balita, and I, I, I just call her Fides or uh, Maria sometimes, <laughs> two names, <laughs> and um, all right, and uh, believe it or not, this lady just landed in the O'Hare Airport a couple of hours ago. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's how dynamic and energetic this woman is. And I I really salute her for that. Yeah. She is a, she is a CPA. And uh, let me um, say something about her. She is, Maria is the founder and managing partner of the Maharlika Maharlika PLLC. What is PLLC? Uh, ano po, a professional limited liability company. So it's a limited liability company for um for specific uh professions, like for example, CPAs or lawyers. And if you want to open a firm that is an LLC setup, uh, gusto po ng Illinois Department of Professional Regulations that it will be a PLLC. And your firm um, well, uh, provides audit and consulting services. Okay, can you, uh, please explain further. So uh, Maharlika PLLC po is uh, formed in last year. So we are now on our first anniversary. And we provide audit, accounting, and consulting services. Uh, the consulting services is primarily uh, assistance to management if they have some special projects or some um, uh, uh, non-attest engagements, those that are not um, 
going to be issuing an opinion, but management will be needing a report. The accounting services for includes bookkeeping, um, just regular setting up of books, and then audit will be if you have a 401k plan, a pension, or a government plan, or government services that you will be needing some financial statements audit either for regulatory requirements or just for use of management uh, to have comfort as to the financials that are being generated as far as the results of the operations of a company or an organization. Wow, that sounds very heavy to me, Maria. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> okay, and um, all right, with the, and this Maharli Coffee LLC just yeah, celebrated its the first year anniversary. Yes, of course. Congratulations. Well. Congratulations. Thank you, Paul. It's such a blessing. Uh, so last year it was just me, and uh, now. Uh, we have four members of the firm and we're getting ready to onboard three more individuals. And so it's really very exciting. Bo. Um, I've been getting a lot of tractions as far as uh, reaching out to clients. And uh, it's really very interesting that we also received our certification as a woman and minority owned firm, uh, which is uh, really very Good, especially with all the diversity and equity and inclusion initiatives uh, for the supplier diversity, especially for companies who will have, uh, who will want uh, supplier diversity in their programs. So that certification as a woman and minority owned firm allows me to participate in those types of solicitations. And also for contracts that are so big, um, and and the and government contracts would allow certain participations for smaller firms like our firm. Great, terrific. Um, that's, wow. I I'm telling you, I uh, I still I really cannot understand what uh, you really are, are doing, but I know it's something that I cannot do. <laughs> <laughs> It's something for very technical, but you know, for it's it's something that is uh um easy to understand and for for the people who are needing their financial uh, statements, kung halimbawa po they want to understand kumikita ba yung negosyo nila, magkano yung mga sales nila, how much are their sales, how much are their expenses, how much are their assets. So those items for the results of the operations are being presented in a financial statement para po the the businesses will know how they are doing and so our firm either prepares those financial statements for them or kami po yung nag audit so it, it's uh, helping uh, management uh, perform if its function with regards to the operations all right okay maria there is um a very exciting organization that uh, you uh you have been involved with and uh, the name of that organization is Filipino Women's Network. Filipino Women's Network. And um, the name the name itself uh, sounds so exciting. But uh, can you please tell us about the FWN in short? Thank you, Paul, for the opportunity to explain what Filipino Women's Network is. Um, I've been involved with this organization since 2019 when I received the Filipina 100 Most Influential Filipino Women in the World Award. Uh, the, the organization is an awardees, it's an organization of awardees for the 100 Most Influential Filipino Women in the World. And they are the leaders in the public and private sectors for about 34 countries uh, that are selected yearly from a worldwide search. Um, the vision of the organization is to be the number one resource for leadership, personal and professional development of Filipino women worldwide. Um, and its mission uh, for is for a Filipino woman uh, leader in every sector of the economy. So meron po tayong healthcare, ako po as in finance, kayo po is in media. So we want to have like a Filipino woman leader in every sector of the economy. Um, the the exciting news for about the Filipino Women's Network is that they create this book. One of their programs is creating a book that's uh that's about the leadership journey of the awardees. It is now a series of 
four books and the this the title of the book is disrupt so it's now disrupt 1.0 2.0 3.0 and there is the fourth book so this was launched for the first global launch last year was in portugal in lisbon and it has been launched in philippines in february san francisco in march of this year and then uh, Toronto was August and September 14th was Los Angeles. And so that book launch is also coming to Chicago on October 14th. And Tita V, thank you so much for gracing my invitation. You will be one of our guest readers. So we have authors who are coming. Uh, somebody from Canada is coming who is also an author of Disrupt 4.0. Uh, somebody from 3.0, uh, she is from Los Angeles. The CEO of Filipino Women's Network, Marilyn Mondehar, is also coming. Um, and then we have guest readers, um, and they, uh, you are select guest readers. We have yourself, we have Gail Floresca, Teresa Icolina, and then Malve Ildefonso. Malve, she is an awardee last year, um, and then she will also be a guest reader for the Chicago uh, launch. It's very exciting for it's going to be held on the Westin O'Hare in Rosemont, October 14th at 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, we encourage people to come at 3.30 so we can have some networking and some light refreshments. My goodness, sounds like a really top-notch women get together, right? Yes. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, this will really be a very exciting afternoon because of, because I, these women that will be attending are surely alpha females. <laughs> and uh, I wrote about alpha female in my, in my uh, column in Diet Times last month, and I think I will still be continuing it. I don't know. My God. That really sounds so exciting. I'm telling you, around do um, you have any number of uh, number of people uh, that are coming on that day? Um, that day, were our our um our expected uh, authors will be. I think about authors and guest readers. There will be about nine or ten. And uh, so the registrations are open. It's gonna be at the FFW and um, summit.org events. Uh, and then um, the registration for is $35 per person and it comes with a free book. So the reg you're basically for just buying the cost of one book. Uh, but for this event, you'll be able to get um, the author's reading. And then if you want to have a book signed, like your, your book will be uh, autographed by the author's present, um, there will be uh, some opportunity to, for book signing. There will be books that are available from all four um, for all the series. Uh, of course, there will be more books available for the 4.0 because that's the one that is being launched. And um, I just, Tita, I just wanted what to mention the titles of the four books. So Disrupt 1.0 um, is called Filipino Women, Proud, Loud, and Leading Without a Doubt. It redefines how Filipino women in the diaspora are perceived. The second book, which is Disrupt 2.0, the title is Filipino Women Daring to Lead. It is an affirmation of the leadership competencies of Filipino leaders with a global mindset. And then the Disrupt 3.0 is rising. So you can see for that the trajectory of how the leadership journeys are being captured in this literature. So Disrupt 3.0 is the leadership stories of Filipinas who have emerged as global leaders despite varying levels of challenges. And the Disrupt 4.0, which is this one that we're being launched, is Filipino women being. It reflects the traje trajectory of being a Filipina who she is now. So you can really see for the, the progression from loud, proud being without a doubt. We just want to make ourselves visible. We want to have that rede redefinition of who we are because we are leaders. We are not just some hidden talent. We want to be visible. We want people to see us. And so it's really very exciting times. Um, 
that we have this literature capturing all of these leadership journeys. And, and, and for us to be able to showcase to the world that Filipinas are leaders. And this total of four series have over 136 authors. The 4.0, we are 36 co-authors in this book. And so you will learn a lot of the stories. 600 pages is very much well worth the $35 that you will, you will buy for the registration or if you want to buy the book itself. Well, Maria, I saw the book and it is really very, very thick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, it's a series of what you're saying is that it is a series of um, books, which now is this is the fourth one, right? Um, yeah. 4.0. Uh, this is a series of books about the uh, um the works and um, I mean victories of the Filipino women out there okay yes. showing the strength and the leadership all right my question is why did you choose or the, the group why did the uh, WN chose the name disrupt what what does that mean Yes, thank you, Paul. The disrupt means disruptors, but we're challenging the status quo. Kaya po siya disrupt is we are disruptors. We are not just, you know, silent. We are, sometimes, Paul, we have that image that, oh, Filipino women, you are shy. You're, you're, you're just putting your head down. You are not a leader. You don't have soft skills. You... You're just quiet. You're just down there, you know. But that's why we're disrupting is disrupt the status quo. We're just not happy with how people perceive us because people do not know how we really have accomplished who we are, how we have gotten a seat at the table, and we are leaders in our own right, in our own industries. And we want to use that as a platform to inspire people because some people want to see somebody who has achieved it in order to realize that, hey, if she can make it, I can too. And so it's good for people to see that we have some role models, role models that we can look up to. And, and I myself, well, when I was reading, I have the four books. I, I have all those four books and I have read stories of, of these women and they are really amazing. It's really like, sometimes I would feel, wow, these people are really, amazing. really really amazing they're magnificent women and they are really there to represent us um and it's it's just it's just very humbling to be in that book you know in it of itself for is already um an amazing experience and very humbling to be a part of those um women in the disrupt series wow I can't wait. But what did you say that uh, there's going uh, it's going to be held at the Westin Hotel? It's the, gonna be held at, at the Westin um Westin O'Hare in Rosemont. Yeah. At as uh, as uh, I believe it's sixty oh, fourteen. No, October fourteen. Four o'clock PM to six PM. Uh, please arrive early, three thirty to three thirty PM is registration and networking. And we'll have uh, some Filipino based refreshments. It sure sounds very exciting to me. I really look forward to be there. And um, well, 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 well. Uh, all the, these dynamic uh, Filipino women, uh, and I'm telling you, I, I, I might, uh, I might be too shy to. Uh, to be uh, uh, to be talking to some of these women because I am uh, I I don't think I 
I'll be uh, comparable to to many of these uh, achievers. Oh, we're so, we're all we're all the same. We're all the same, Tita B. We're all the same. Uh, Tita, I just wanted to have one more opportunity to to grab this opportunity while I have you both. So one other organization that um that I'm involved in is the International Society of Filipinos in Finance and Accounting, and this is the one organization where I was able to be recognized in the Hall of Fame, and. And I, I'm familiar with this organization. I know many uh, members. Yes, and, and thank you, Paul, because this year, it marks our 10th year anniversary. That's why it is so exciting because 10 years ago, we were just forming the chapter and now it's already on its 10th year. We're going to have an induction dinner and the 10th year anniversary celebration on October 15th. So that will be the following day. But it's going to be in Des Plains at the Manzo's Banquets in Des Plains, Illinois. October 15th, that's a Sunday at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So Andrew, if you can remember for Andrew Guerrero, he will be the chapter president. And so this is exciting times. Members of the National Executive Board will be attending the events the um, and the induction dinner. Um, we have Edith, when Dr. Edith in Winter Halter, she will be the keynote speaker. And we also have Malve Ildefonso, who will be giving the oath to the officers. So it's very exciting. These two events, October 14th and October 15th. And this is for very much in line with the Filipino American History Month that we celebrate in October. So we're really very um, happy and proud to um, share and celebrate uh, our heritage. Wow, look at you. You never rest. <laughs> talking about all these organizations that uh, you have been participating and you have been organizing and you have been uh, oh my god um, um, I'm telling you uh, Mar Maria where do you get your energy <laughs> I, I think it's uh, I think it's just a holistic of uh... Uh, approach to it for uh, because these organizations also um, give so much back that um, it's 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 very important that their mission and their purpose will be told uh, so that it can um, share back to the community who has given us so much as well as to who I am now and who I will go to be. Um, these organizations have helped me a lot and I have given also my, my energy and commitment. Um, but it's more of like helping each other so that our community as a whole um, will, will be uh, better. Well, 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 what can I say? Maria Fides Balita she is uh, your typical, believe it or not, a typical Filipino woman that really is always out there, out there helping people, helping the members of the community. And um, I'm really so proud of you, um, Maria, and I look forward to um, working with you at the Disrupt 4.0. I I cannot wait. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And, and thank you. Thank you so much for gracing our show today. And maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood. Ako si Veronica. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye, Maria. Bye-bye. Do you need to get your hands on some extra money right now? Maybe 25000 or more? If you're a homeowner, now is a perfect time to get cash out, while homes in many neighborhoods like yours have gone up in value. You can use the money for anything. It's yours. You can buy an investment property, pay for college, pay off higher interest debt, or make home improvements. 
A cash out refinance is the perfect solution to get the cash you need. If you need $25,000, $50,000, or even $100,000, now's the time. Home values are up, and so is your equity. We offer you a way to use it. No need to sell your home or use your savings. Call New American Funding now and speak to a cash out refi specialist and see how much cash out you can get. Call New American Funding at 855-332-3929. That's 855-332-3929. Call 855-332-3929. And welcome to Veronica's segment of this show today. I have a very interesting, very young, and very pretty guest. And um, this we, we will know more about this beautiful girl. And her name is J.G. Makapugay. And J.G. is a Filipino actor, Filipino actor. And uh, she's now appearing in Here Lies, Here Lies Love. A very popular uh, show that's going up right now, right? Still in in, uh, in New York, in Broadway. All right. Okay, welcome to our show, JG. Thank you so Hi. much for having me, Tita B. It's an honor to be here. You're so pretty and, um, oh, and uh, wow, talented. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, I, I grew up listening or I grew up... Uh, looking at your magazine via times so i'm excited to virtually meet you in person i remember via times growing up okay jg's family lives in our neighborhood in nice illinois right that's uh, right. she's working in new york all right let's try to uh, the title is the interview jg welcome to our show and um okay um can you please tell us about your, a little bit of your background so that our viewers can know you? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, well, I live in New York right now, but I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. I grew up in Logan Square uh, and in high school, we moved to Park Ridge, Illinois, and I went to Maine East High School there. I dabbled a little bit in theater um, in, around as a late bloomer. I didn't start until like junior year high school. And then when I went to college, uh, I went to the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, and I actually started out as a voice major, but then I didn't think it was a responsible career to be a voice major, and I transitioned into an advertising major and started working at an ad agency for a couple years, and I knew I didn't want to do that um after a while and what i really wanted to do was sing so after doing some community theater in the chicago suburbs i auditioned for disney world on my day off and i got the job to be a, a singer at disney for a few years so it's kind of a crazy career because I didn't ever imagine that I really would consider being a performing artist, but I've been doing it for about 20 years now, and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. Wait a minute. I've been doing it for about 20 years now. I'm just 20 years old to me. <laughs> yeah, don't look so close, Tita V. You know, it's 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 a nice... <laughs> I, the goal is to stay young looking forever, <laughs> just like you. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, you also, uh, as a performing artist, you also must really have a beautiful voice. Well, that's what I'm banking on for the rest of my career. I, I Like I said, I started out as a singer at Disney World. It was a 30-minute theme park show called Tarzan Rocks. And I worked there for almost, gosh, three, four years. And then I knew I really wanted to act. And you kind of reach a ceiling in Orlando, Florida. There's no real opportunities for, for serious acting. So I moved to New York City. And when I moved to New York, 
Um, I didn't, like I said, my degree wasn't in theater uh, or music. So I, the first couple of years in New York was almost like I was creating my own uh, conservatory and taking acting classes and dance classes, um, all while temping at an office during the, during the day so that I could afford my dance classes and voice lessons and acting classes. And then I started doing some community, not community, some regional theater and uh, did a lot of Miss Saigon's. I did a lot of regional productions of Miss Saigon and The King and I. And then I started building a name for myself and started working in, in New York more. And um, so I've been fortunate. I've been in three Broadway musicals. I started, my first Broadway musical was uh, School of Rock. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber was the composer. And then I did Shucked, the musical, um, just the beginning of this year. And then I left Shucked to perform in Here Lies Love on Broadway. The first all Filipino cast ever to be assembled on Broadway, the biggest stage in the world. Wow, congratulations. Uh, so it seems to me that uh, uh, you have been uh, playing as a Broadway uh, actor and um, I'm th um, are you really planning to stay on Broadway as an actor? Well, you know, that's the hope because you have to audition for every job you get. I think there are very few actors that just get handed a job, you know? So for every show that I've ever done, I've almost every show I've ever done, I've had to audition for it. And that's just like anything. It's like being interviewed for a job and then you hope they like what they see. Um, as an actor, I think of myself as a casting director and a show has a casting problem and I have a solution for it. So hopefully they like my solution and I keep working. Uh -huh. Well, um, are you eyeing Hollywood? I've, I've done some television and film and it's something that I, I have thought about more and more. Um, it's just like it's a, another arena altogether, which involves its own skill set, a lot of its own research, I'm definitely not opposed to it. I have a movie on Hulu um, and it's a, a, a small film that uh, Alana Glazer was in. It's called False Positive and Pierce Brosnan is also in it and it's a small scene. I enjoyed it. The thing is about musical theater, you're there eight shows a week. You're performing every single day except one day when you do a film. They, you're there for one day and then they shoot it and then it airs and then you get money for it later on. And it's like, wow, maybe TV and film is easier than theater. <laughs> Goodness. You know what? I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. As a uh, Filipino actor. And uh, I'm wondering, how did your parents react um, when, you know, decided or you told them that you want to be an actor? Yeah, um, it's a good question because, you know, my parents are immigrants from the Philippines. They're from uh, Malolos, Bulacan, and they wanted a much better life for me here in the States. Um, you know, they never encouraged me to be an actor, but they also didn't discourage me either. They were very supportive. Um, sometimes I, when I talk to my other friends, you know, they were pigeonholed right away to be like, oh, you're going to be a nurse uh, or you're going to be a, a, an accountant or a doctor. And, you know, I thought maybe I could put myself into that mold um, as a business executive. And I tried it, but it, it didn't make me happy. So when I told them, you know, my parents, I think it was like they just want to make sure that I'm fed that I have a house, like a roof over my head, I could take care of myself. And I think I've proven to them that I've been able to do so. And, uh, you know, they're happy for me. They're really happy for me now. They must really be so proud of you. Yeah. And, um, well, anyway, what is your role in love life? This, uh, in this play, Here Lies Love. Yes. Okay, so... Here Lies Love is a musical about the rise and fall of Imelda Marcos. 
and her dazzling rise and downfall. Um, and Imelda Marcos is played by me one day a week. So on Broadway, you've got the, the main Imelda who is played by the fantastic Ariel Jacobs. But what um, they do is they have one person that's an alternate that performs the role once a week. So I perform the show as Imelda Marcos on Tuesday nights. And you know, one of the funny things that I've tried to do to hype up the show and get people to come and watch it is I have a hashtag and it makes my husband hates it because he says it makes no sense, but I have fun with it. So on, on social media, I say hashtag Makatus Day because my last name is Makapugai. So and people want to come see the show and see me on a Tuesday night, you should come to hashtag Makatus Day. <laughs> All right. Very good. I, I, I've had uh, some friends telling me about the play. Yes, from here, from Chicago. They uh, they went to New York um, to see the show and they said it's fantastic. Um, I'm telling you so. Um, maybe you can um, you can uh, talk about it a little bit and invite our Filipino friends to see the show in New York. I would love I'm that. Planning, I really am planning if I you know if I really have time and I don't have any any health concerns to go to New York and see this show. I've heard so much about, uh, you know, uh, so much about it. That would be incredible. And if you come to the show, come, let me make sure you send me an email because I'll give you a tour of, of our theater and backstage. Um, All right. Yeah. Very it's, cool. Thank it's you. Really incredible. Like, Filipinos have been flying in to see our show from Chicago. Uh, my college friend from the University of Illinois, Illinois came last night and they, they come in for like the weekend uh, just to experience this, this unprecedented theatrical event because Broadway doesn't normally have a Filipino story centered on stage. This is the first time ever and having an all Filipino cast um, and we've had different- All Filipino cast, yeah. All First time, wow. first time, all Filipino cast, and we have different uh, Filipino producers. And one of our producers who also acted in, in the show is someone that you might know named Leia Salonga. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Leia was with us for the first uh, two months of the show. And then when she left, she was replaced by Vina Morales. And Vina Morales is in our show right now. Oh, she's a movie star. She's a movie yeah, star. Wow. She's going to be with us until October 22nd. Um, and it's been really exciting to have her in our show because she's a legitimate TV and pop star. And she's so nice and so excited to be part of our show. I never thought someone as famous as Vina would be so nervous and, and humbled to be a part of our Broadway show. But... People are coming out to see her, and she's really incredible in the role. She plays a Ninoy Aquino's mother in the show. Great, terrific, and uh, wow, really sounds so exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. The thing is, uh, uh, if you come see our show, you have different ways of seeing it. You can be in the traditional mezzanine seating, just like a regular Broadway theater. But what they did was they made our theater into a dance club. So they took out the seats on the front level and they made it into a club, into a disco. So if you want to be on the floor, being part of the story, like dancing in the club with all, with all of the actors, the Filipino actors telling the story, you have your choice of being on the floor or you can watch it in the audience. So we have so many different ways of seeing our show and that's what makes it more unique than other Broadway shows. It's not just a typical theatrical experience. It's one of a kind. Sounds so exciting. Yeah. yeah. yeah so um, if I plan on going there and seeing the show, I, I, I can be in front and uh, by telling them that I'm a senior, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, check on that. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll well, I'll get you a specific area that I think you will like the most. Maybe because if uh, my mom were when were to come to see the show, there's the mezzanine, the the front part of the mezzanine where you can see everything, but you don't oh necessarily. My goodness. You don't necessarily Really have to be on the dance floor, but you can still see it all. So, like I said, whatever your uh, preference is, you'll be able to enjoy the show. I want to talk to your mom about that. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be happy to. Well, she was the one that got in touch with you. I feel like I know what's happening. This is a test of the wireless emergency system. <laughs> I'm an, I'm doing an interview with Tita V, Veronica Layton. My gosh. Anyway, turning my phone off. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. JG, um anything else that you want to say for our uh, Chicago viewers? You know, I think I'm just so excited to share our story with you and your viewers because Our musical is about martial law as well. And a lot of the Filipinos that have come to see our show, they hadn't really talked about martial law since it happened. And there's something about expressing a story through art that encourages conversation. Like I have seen Filipino parents come to the show with their kids. and they talk about martial law for the first time. You know, I think there's something about Filipinos. We laugh to keep from crying. We don't talk about the hard things. But when you have a show that is on the biggest stage in the world, it enables Filipinos to feel more comfortable to talk about their experiences. And it makes people emotional, but it makes people share. And I think that's really important. I think the more we're able to talk about the hard stuff is that we can also celebrate the good stuff too. Wow, well, JG, you with what you're doing, you really make um, the Filipinos all over the world uh, proud of you. Thank you so that much. Only us from Chicago, I'm sure of that. And I thank you for gracing our show today. And uh, for any updates, you can always give uh, get in touch with us. Well, thank, thank you so much. Maraming, maraming salamat sa you. Thank you for being such a leader in our community for several generations. Thank you. All right. Bye. And hope to see you in New York. Yeah. Make sure you let me know. And, uh, you know, watching the... Uh, the uh, popular, it's really very popular. People have been talking about it. Here, here lies love. Yeah, okay. and I say watch us sooner than later. Don't wait. All right. Oh, uh, one last question. Is that a story about uh, Imelda Marcos? 100%. It's a story about her rise and her fall. Um and the beginnings of, you know, how she, how a person becomes the way they are, you know, because the truth is she's a dictator's wife and there's a lot of things, uh, good and bad, that she did for the Filipinos. And so to have this story be told, I think it's it's really important. And you decide if you feel like we did, the, we did a good job. All right. Terrific. Thank you so much. At Bye-bye. Salamat. And, thank you. Uh, and thank you for watching our show today. And marami marami salamat po sa inyong pananood. Oko, ako po si Veronica. Bye, JG. Bye. Bye. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain, and we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months, and uh, we have a layaway system, which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold, and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo. Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino-Quadra bringing you this week's local news from our community. 
Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, Illinois EPA, Director John J. Kim announced $750,000 in funding through the release of a Section 604B Water Quality Management Program grant notice of funding opportunity. This grant program is used to implement the Illinois Water Quality Management Program, an Illinois non-point source management program through water quality projects and activities. Grant funds under this program can be used to determine the nature, extent, and causes of point and non-point source water pollution, develop watershed-based plans, and develop technical and administrative tools to support development and implementation of water pollution control projects and programs. In addition, projects can develop designs for best management practices to address water quality problems, implement administrative water pollution controls, and educate the public about the impact and importance of water pollution control. The Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity is celebrating National Women's Business Month throughout October by recognizing the significant contributions of women-owned businesses throughout the state. The month-long celebration, which is designated through a proclamation, includes business resources such as virtual and in-person events, resource guides for financial and social capital, business spotlights on social media, and a social media campaign to support and elevate Illinois women-owned businesses. This month and every month, we're proud to continue supporting, uplifting, and celebrating women-owned businesses throughout our great state, said Governor J.B. Pritzker. For too long, women business leaders and entrepreneurs faced systemic and financial barriers when starting and growing a business. But here in Illinois, we're making it possible for everyone to succeed through increased grant opportunities and access to resources. The Illinois Student Assistance Commission kicks off October with its annual College Changes Everything campaign. For the past eight years, during CCE Month and the Fall CCE campaign, ISAC has partnered with schools and community-based organizations to provide free college and financial aid application completion workshops statewide. This year, however, CCE campaign activities will extend through the winter to better support students and families in light of the transition to and later launch date of the new Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. The U.S. Department of Education has announced that the new simplified 2024-2025 FAFSA will not be available until December 2023, rather than in October. To align with the launch of the FAFSA, the 2024-2025 Alternative Application for Illinois Financial Aid, Alternative Application for Qualifying Undocumented Students will also launch in December 2023. During October and November, ISAC and partners will continue to offer free college application workshops, as well as college planning and financial aid presentations. Because everyone, student or parent, who plans to complete the FAFSA will need to get an FSA ID, username and password, and the process may involve multiple steps. In celebration of Digital Inclusion Week, Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle released Cook County's first ever Digital Equity Action Plan. The plan offers a strategic framework to ensure that all Cook County residents have equitable access to the digital infrastructure devices and tools to thrive in today's economy and society. It also invites residents, businesses, and community organizations to collaboratively build impactful solutions in the areas of digital accessibility, confidence, safety, and security, and infrastructure. To kick off DIW, Cook County's Bureau of Technology also released an interactive digital equity map, which allows residents to gain insights about digital access in their communities. The quality of digital equity in Cook County affects the economy, well-being, and social connection of every resident, though some communities are more affected than others and in unique ways, said Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle. Cook County is committed to building digital equity for all residents, and this action plan charts our path forward. 
Asian Cultural Council, the preeminent organization advancing international dialogue through arts and cultural exchange between Asia and the U.S. and within Asia, announced the opening of its next global funding cycle with applications accepted from November 1st through the 30th, 2023. As an ACC grant recipient, artists, scholars, and arts professionals may pursue a diverse of projects, from targeted research to open-ended cultural exploration, with a focus on process-driven activities that enable cultural immersion, relationship building, and collaboration amongst peers. ACC grantees build international connections and personal experiences during their grant periods. Since ACC's founding 60 years ago, its grant-making activities have nurtured mutual understanding, expanded individual artistic practices, contributed to new scholarship, and allowed grantees to share their experiences with local and global communities. That's all for today. Thank you for watching our news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.